Josh here back again with another report, the Monday report this time because it's a holiday weekend. I hope everyone's having a great 4th of July. Let's go ahead and talk about some markets. So last week we were talking about that put play, which actually played out really well. And I was really happy with that. We pulled it up here. We had coming in the fifth wave right here on the Elliott waves. Uh, coming at that 393 that we talked about, ended up having a sell off afterwards. We sold some right here, still holding some of those contracts. They expire on the 14th or 15th. Um, and uh, I'm expecting those to play out well. This market's come down a lot. A lot of people are saying, okay, is the bottom in? Like, if you're with me, I still think that we have another leg down on the way. And look, it could come fast. You know, the big thing to think about in this market environment is there's not a lot of liquidity, which means you don't really need a lot to get big moves out of this market. I think the cryptos have a more big down, down move ahead, and I think the stock market does as well. And I am expecting the Fed to kind of be the causal factor for that. If not, you know, we have another uh, round of earnings coming up, and I expect those to be rough as well. The market's starting to catch up that a recession is here. And I think we're going to need to see that bleeding. The big thing here that we're going to need to keep in mind is you're going to see the lows hit the market at least three to six months before it hits the economy. All right. So remember, this is a forward looking indicator. So this market will start to recover before the economy does. And what we're going to need to do is develop some disconnect from the headlines very soon. All right. When those lows come in, the headlines will persist, they'll still be terrible, and this market will rally against it, and everyone will be in denial. This is now where my mind is going to be at. I don't want to be caught too up too much in the headlines, and when they get really bad is when I'm going to get really bullish. So let's kind of talk about some different sectors after we go over our economic calendar. Hey, this is Josh and Interrupting Josh. I'll let you know that we're doing a one day sale for the 4th of July. Get 75% off your first month subscription to the Discord with the coupon code JULY, J U L Y, all caps. 75% off. This ends at 1201 on July 5th. All right. So if you come in tomorrow and you're trying to use it, it's not going to work. One day only. Grab it while it's hot which is what you should not do with a firework. So let's hop right into the economic calendar. Tuesday, not much going on, but Wednesday we have our FOMC minutes. This is going to be a big deal. Keep an eye on that. Job openings will also be interesting to see if we continue to see lots of hiring in this environment. Remember, we're headed to a recession, so we do expect a lot of job destruction to be occurring here. Speaking of job destruction, if I can put my words together, uh, we have the unemployment rate coming in on Friday. That's also going to be a big deal. We're going to want to keep an eye on that because remember, the Fed's still looking at that. The Fed's still using that as one of their data indicators for whether they should continue tightening. But at the end of the day, I still think inflation is still the main driver for this Federal Reserve. If inflation is still high, they're going to continue tightening. And this actually brings us to a whole other topic because I think that we could have a uh, setting here for stagflation. It's a possibility. It's not an inevitability to me yet, but it is a possibility that we could have three to four months of this terrible stagflation and that might cause this market to kind of just wobble and be really choppy. It'll be miserable. At that point, I might be starting to look for more particular stock names, which will bring me back to that uh, sector conversation. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at TLT. If I pull that up right here, We've seen these big sell-offs in TLT. This was into the close. This is about 18 million volume on the sell. This is the Fed doing a quantitative tightening. These moves caught me off guard. I did a bunch of digging and I was like, okay, this is what this looks like when we see quantitative tightening. Remember, it's been a while since we've seen that. All right. We've had, uh, I don't know, a decade of, of easing and uh, monetary policies, but now we're getting quantitative tightening, which leads to these big sell-offs. The big thing here, though, the thing that's standing out to me is the buyers come right back in, and we're seeing this. We've seen the market start to pivot here, all right? So um, these are just small short-term waves. Probably need to do a longer um, wave, Elliott wave here, but to really chart out the TLT trajectory. But I think that we're we could be in an environment where we've seen the lows in the bonds and that these could come back. There's still a lot of people who think that bonds are not the buy in a recession. And there's an argument to be made there. However, I get that and that argument is based on the fact that the Fed will continue tightening the market the market can handle it. I still think that this is not true. I think the Fed will break the market. 
that after we hit the lows, the Fed will have to stay, step in and save these markets. And we've already seen so many signs of recession, um, but there's some people who think that the market can handle that and that these bonds are headed lower in the face of more tightening. We'll see. Mm, let's take a, take a sip break. I have some uh, banana whiskey. It's a holiday. Don't judge me. Anyways, I still have my bond play set up. Still long on those earlier in the year. Took a big loss. Sucked. I'm still with the play because I still think the fundamentals are there. I still think the Fed will end up breaking the market eventually and have to pivot out of their position. I just don't think we've hit that yet. Uh, trust me. I think that it'll be very obvious when we have. Um, it won't be obvious if you're following the headlines, but it'll be obvious if you're just following the charts. And so I might end up rolling these plays out to a larger, large, longer time frame expiration, probably in December uh, is what I'm looking at right now. Previously had them set for September. And that's kind of where my mind's at right now. I do expect a lot more volatility here, though, lots of bigger swings. And I do not like playing this in the short term. This is a long term play. And that's kind of where my mind's at right now. One thing I don't want to do, though, is continue to average into this position, into this volatility. I'm just going to let it play where it's at. I had the allocation that I'm willing to risk with this. And I'm just going to let it ride, which is not something I usually do with positions usually if something's run about 30 percent it gets me i'm out and i'm reassessing however for this one i'm willing to try a few attempts at it until i get it right because i think it's a good play and because i think it'll eventually pay out big for me hey this is for the reminder to like the video maybe subscribe to the channel it helps us out a lot ring that bell well we're no bell but we want you to ring a bell i, I don't know that's kind of a predicament i don't know what to do about that i don't know if to call it a buzzer but then you might know not know to click the bell thing. I don't know. Someone help me. Like the video, please. And so let's go ahead and talk about some sectors and some things going on in the market. If we tune in to here to this chart, we can see that a lot of these chip companies are hitting some lows and they're having some bleeding. The whole market is though. But the thing here is that we're actually seeing some downgrades finally from the chip companies. And if we look at eBay or different sellers, we're seeing that the alpha market is having some relief in its prices as well. As we shared in the Discord in the past, um, there's been lots of articles about this. Average selling a GeForce 380s compared to Ethereum prices. There's a really tight correlation here. As this market is um, headed downwards, we've seen lots of capitulation in these prices. And so it looks like the market is finding uh, a bottom here as it is starting to downgrade and as the business cycle is starting to come to the downside now going long on these positions when these companies are not doing so hot is really profitable to do uh, historically um, these tend to outperform the market when bullish markets come around and remember recessions set the base for bull markets as i said in the beginning of the video as we get closer to these lows, we start to build a bullish case, all right? There's gonna be an eventual point where the lows come in and we're gonna to wanna to buy. And when that hits, I'm gonna pivot from my macro trading stance and go back to company picking. And so one of the companies, a few of the companies that have really stood out, that we've talked about a lot of the Discord, the one shown here on your screen, NVIDIA, ASML, and actually I'm gonna change AMD to Intel. I really like Intel because of the way that they've strategically positioned themselves for production. I think this provides a nice hedge against further geopolitical volatility that could come around, uh, whether that be well, mostly based around China potentially invading Taiwan, which I still think could happen. But Micron Technology was a big signal. They had their earnings um, this past week. And we saw that there was big downgrades here and that caused as you could see a big reaction from the other chip makers as well however when these lows come in these tend to be really great buys asml is a big one um joe our fund manager in the discord is a big fan of this um and so i think there's some opportunities that are starting to brew up here is this the time to buy I'm not sure. We got one more drawdown in this market. However, at these prices, if you have its 10 to five year horizon, I think these are still really great prices. And I have CRISPR pulled up here because I feel the same way about CRISPR. I was actually doing some research um, earlier this weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is when I was kind of digging through it. And I was going through their most recent, um, they have a big 
Innovation Day, basically, where they're talking about their pipeline, the things in the pipeline, how the research is going. A lot of that data is really exciting. And and then I was kind of looking at, they had some charts as well that kind of showed their market share when compared to the pharmaceutical companies. Some of the things I just kind of want to point out, um, and I'm not going to do a full data analysis or go into the tech because I think I might lose a lot of your interest, um, especially if you don't have a biotechnology background. But the big thing to remember here is that biotechnology is not just providing new medicines, okay? They're changing the game of medicine, okay? This is going to be a new way of using medicine. This is going to be a new way of providing healthcare. These are whole new systems being built. And so, yes, there's going to be a lot of volatility here. Yes, a lot of it is experimental. Yes, there's going to be more regulation in the space for sure. But when you look at just the market share that these companies have, the way the market has punished them in this downturn, it is nonsensical. This is the technology of the future. It's here. And I think when we look back, I think we're going to see Kathy Wiz was right. Now, was her timing the greatest? No, absolutely not. But she was right. This is a huge biotechnological revolution that's going on currently in the modern world day to day. We're seeing it play out month over month. It's been amazing. The amount of things that this company is going to uh, solve, the amount of issues uh, or solutions it's going to provide are not going to really be in the toolkit of what people have to conceptualize it. All right. This isn't a new medicine. This is a new form of medicine. Okay, this isn't one uh, one solution for one problem. This is a, a new, whole new, well, I'm reusing the same word again, but a whole new toolkit for solving problems in the medical world. And it's going to be revolutionary and is revolutionary. It's here. The technology is here. In five to ten years, CRISPR will probably be the largest name in biotech. And there's a few other biotech companies um, that I'm going to be posting in the Discord shortly that I think are standout winners. But remember, if you want to see those, join the link in the description down below and check them out in the Discord. And I just want to quickly add that when I'm talking about the market share they have, it's such a small proportion of what they will resolve. They're going to put a lot of these pharmaceutical companies out of business. And not just them, but a lot of the psychedelic companies as well. These huge companies that are making tons of profits off these depressant medications or anti-anxiety medications or PTSD medications. These are all going to be disrupted. CRISPR, biotechnology sector in general, and these psychedelic companies are coming for the pharmaceutical companies. And they know it. When you look at where they put their money, it's not into themselves. It's into these other innovations. I just wanted to add that because it's a huge part of the conversation. So not much charting today. I do think the market is kind of in a little bit of a melt-up mode, but there's so many downside catalysts right now that I don't really want to play it. I want to keep my uh, hedging going. I want to stay bearish in this market, keep myself protected, because I think there's one more drop down on the way. However, I think there'll be some volatility if your input plays right now. They could be a little bit rough in the short term. Remember, the FOMC minutes is going to be a one downside catalyst. Earnings are going to be another one. And the Federal Reserve, of course, is still tightening on this market into a recession. So it still is like still looks like there's going to be lots of bleeding on the way. That said, it could also hit energy as well. If you want to hear about energy, make sure you check out last week's report. Not much has changed since then. I still have the same opinions there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this holiday version of the Sunday report or Monday report as it is today. I will see you next week where we'll do another reevaluation on some charting and go over some more Elliott waves, Fibonacci levels, some moving averages, RSI. We'll touch base again hopefully soon. Right now, the market's just in this middle ground, like I said. So I will see you next week. I hope you all have a wonderful 4th of July. And remember, don't blow yourself up. Did you catch that? Don't blow yourself up. Not just with fireworks, but also in your account. Hee <laughs> hee.